Hey guys, <clears throat> so long time no talk. Um, as most of you know, I've been getting some stuff together, um, starting a website um, for certain products, and a lot of you have been asking me about specific things, which I'm going to show you right now. Um, so this is the latex that we carry, and um, it is inkless, but can also obviously be used with ink. So either way. You know, actually this has stuff on it. So it'll be white strokes like that or ink like this. Pretty simple. Um, so that's that. Now it's, um, the brow shape is 5.75 centimeters, so it's a little more realistic from uh, some other latex. It's easier for you to um, transition onto real skin, knowing what a real brow, like the size of one is. Um, so that's that. Um, another thing we're carrying is a universal uh, pen. Um, this is the pre BTCH and Co. This is the prototype, but um, super lightweight. Um, probably the weight a little heavier, maybe than a disposable tool, maybe. Um, but it can hold anything. If you see here, it can hold shading needles in that hole there, as well as on the other side. It can hold shading needles. It can hold any blade, any disposable blade you like, but why I'm selling this product here is for the rollers. We have two. We have one that is 10 millimeter, and the 10 millimeter is not only going to produce bigger holes, but not, I mean, when I say bigger, I mean in, in comparison to the seven millimeter, but bigger holes, but also spaced a little further apart. Okay, it looks just like a little pizza cutter or saw. And the seven millimeter here is gonna produce smaller holes and closer together. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the result is pretty, I mean, it's really not that much of a difference between the two. Um, okay, so what you're going to do to get these guys in is you're gonna take these gold tips off the whole thing. Now these can uh, these need to be sterilized. They need to be cleaned. What I like to do here, which I don't even have one up here, but I put a finger cut over it just to protect it, and then screw in the piece. So super easy, just to take that off, and it looks like I said, just like a regular pen. And then what you do is you take this out of its sterilized pack, whichever one you're going to use. I normally like to have both the ring. A session and then you just take it with your gloves on make sure you have your gloves on and screw it in straight until it's tight there you go this is the 10 millimeter okay I should just pop that out but whatever I'm not doing skin and this is the seven millimeter, which I'm just gonna pop on the other side. So, why do you need this in your arsenal? I'll tell you. A couple things. These do not cause as much trauma to the skin as other manual shading. Um, you're not jabbing back and forth, you are literally rolling back and forth. Very simple, okay? And it just inputs little bits of pigment into each hole. Okay? I've showed you this a thousand times. I think this thing is like, what, three, three, four months old now at this point? This was a mistake, clearly. I just took this and did it on my skin, and this was one pass. This was not me sitting there, you know, messing with it. I mean, I literally went over it once, and I've got this beautiful birthmark I gave myself. It's actually kind of embarrassing. I think people try, or like my manicure lady today thought it was dirt, but it's been there for months, so I don't know why she kept trying to clean it off, but whatever. Okay, so that's that guy. 
Another item is a blade. Um, this is just the first of many. We're starting off small. Um, this is a classic, or as we call classic style, but we'll call it a hockey puck for today. Obviously, I'll come in sterilized packs, blah, 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 packs of 10. It's an 18U blade, it's a Nano. Why is this blade different? Okay, so this is longer here. So what happens is it's got a lot of flex to it. So when you go to turn for your strokes, you don't have to make such a huge movement or anything or do anything crazy because it literally has this crazy amount of flex that it, it goes wherever you need it to. Um, the blade is extremely sharp. It's, I mean, it requires zero, like zero to no pressure at all. Um, and I kind of like to hold it straight up and down, but the cool thing about this blade is you can kind of hold it any way you really like. Um, also, another thing is the microfiber brush on the end has a little tiny well almost, and in the end of it here, so it almost like holds pigment in there as like a pocket, if that makes any sense. So. Can't really see it too well but there's a little dip right in the center so the good thing about that is it saves you it saves pigment because it like kind of keeps it in its little reservoir while you're doing your um, masking so this blade has insane capabilities um, now, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it, you know, um, but once you get it, I'm just moving these, don't count these as hairs, obviously, but I'm just showing you, like, it, it's very, very fine, and this is, like, zero pressure, what I'm doing right now, nothing, okay? And you can use it anyway, you could use it even going up if you're comfortable with that, Literally, however you want to use this thing, it can be used. And that is why I like it. So however your stroke style is, you could use it. Straight on, you want straight up and down, that's cool, it can do it. You wanna pull it back, it can do it. You wanna go this way, guess what, it can do it. You wanna go straight this way, it can do it. So it could do a lot, it has a lot a lot of possibilities. Also what I like, it's a satin feel. Um, so I feel like you have more of a grip. Um, it's a it's a rubbery consistency, not a hard plastic. This is more of a hard plastic, but your grip is a like a rubber grip. grip. And I like it a lot. Okay, so that's the blade and I love these. So, this is all I use now. Okay. Um, so real quick, people have been asking me how do we use the, um, the shader or the roller, which I'm going to show you right now. I'm using Scalpa. Now what I do like, which I don't even have up here right now. I think my Tina Davies is downstairs. up Lenny all right give me one second don't what what are you telling Alexa no why are you talking to her for the delay and back. Okay, so I just have two little things of water here, two little pigment cups. So what I do recommend is either use green soap or distilled water um, when you do have the shader. Not 
it's definitely not a necessity, okay? But if you are using Tina Davies, it's a necessity because that stuff dries up so fast. Okay. So, I'm... There's not going to be a whole lot of pattern here. I'm not really concentrating. I'm just doing this for the sake of the um, video. So I'm just going to turn it. And typically I would have, you know, screw it. I'll just take some water and put it in there and see what happens. Um, let's take this piece of crap. You know, I'm sure you guys know how many blades and products I've been trying for months that I have so many pieces of poop laying around. Not physical poop, but shitty blade, shitty product all over the place. So that one I just used as my stirrer. So basically I just took um, my Scalpa pigment here and I watered it down. Now you can use green soap, you can use Tina Davies shading solution if you have um, the Scalpa uh, solution, that's fine. Um, whatever you want. Water, doesn't matter. So take it and you dip it in your cup. Another thing you can do is kind of go back and forth inside your cup so that it gets on to all the needles. And we're gonna call them needles because I don't wanna really call them blades. What? This is what it does. So, now, I've said it a thousand times. These are what? Dummy proof. These, you have to be, and I actually don't wanna say that because there's probably some people who are like, well, I can't use it, but, um, which is not true. Anybody can use this. Lena's used it. So this is all we do is just go back and forth. And why do I like this as opposed to manual shading? So when you have a stroke, like this, let's just say for example, like this garbage right here. So you have the stroke, right? Well, when you go in with manual shading, you are, lucky for you, I have my stuff here. You're taking whatever needle you have. This is a three round. This is a, what is this, 15 flat? Um, you're taking these needles here and you are getting in there as deep as you can pretty much. And you're jabbing repeatedly with these tiny holes. Well, guess what happens? You can't see your strokes. So more often than not, you're gonna take this needle and you're gonna go right on top of that stroke, right? That's why I used to tell people before I found this guy that I really, really recommend. And there's, it just gets ink all over the place. That's why I used to tell people I really recommend shading a touch up with manual shading because strokes are already established and you can't really mess it up. But, so, if you can see, now mind you, I just did one and one, right? So you can't really even, you can see it a little bit where I went in there compared to that. Like I said, completely dummy proof. So you can rinse your blade off. Like I said, especially if it if you do use Tina Davies or Perma Blend, I highly recommend um, rinsing these quite often. Okay. So now one of you posted a video on our group not too long ago. Um, showing basically like an outline of a brow 
with a blade. Let's use this piece of garbage. So the object is we take our pigment, you have, and you take your outline that's already there that you have drawn, and you go around your outline. with your blade. Which is gonna turn out, don't get me wrong. But it's gonna be more of a straight line. So what I thought was, after she posted this, I was like, wait, what do, what do we think about the rollers? Let's try the rollers. And then what did it do? It did exactly what I thought it was gonna do. So you go around on your outline. And it's very easy just to go once. You don't need to go a bunch of times. And then it gives you a very, very, very thin outline as compared to this, which obviously I didn't. Do such a great job there, but I'm just trying to. So you're gonna get this effect as opposed to this effect. Okay, so moral of this story today is we are just this pigment all sunk to the bottom. I don't like the scalp of pigment for shading, but that's what I had upstairs. So now this is the bigger side. What? In case you haven't known, we had um, some very intense weather here. And it's been me, my husband, and the kids in the house for four days now. Which as I'm sure you understand is pretty intense. Now I have used the Sun Life Skin, um, and I really like it. It's it does the job. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, but like I said, it's it's pretty idiot proof. Bye. Whoa. Like I look. I mean, is there any like brain? effort happening here? No. So then you can go on your tail and make that huge, whatever you want to do. This is going everywhere. FYI, if I was actually shading somebody, I would be using Tina Davies right now. Not necessarily Scalpa. But you don't, just FYI, you do not have to um, dilute your pigment. I just like to. It also depends on like, you know, if you dilute a little bit, it does save you pigment. When you're doing manual shading, you go through, you go through tons, tons of um, pigment.
Then if I wanted to like give the spine a little more of a darker effect, you just go over it a couple more times. I mean, you can eyeball this totally. So no, let's not take this as a perfection course here. This was just for demonstration. But as you saw, as I went over these a couple more times, I got the darker effect and lighter. Um, but you don't need a lot of mind power to do this, I promise. And you'll find yourself just at night doing this by yourself. Trying to find different patterns, trying to find different ways that you want to shade. Um, and that's it. Then, now that we're done, rinse them off. I like to rinse them off with warm water. Or green soap is fine too. And then what I do is I take a paper towel and roll it. <laughs> on the paper towel. Um, like I said, if you do use Tina Davies, you're gonna, that stuff, we all know how it dries up so fast. That's why I do recommend rinsing quite frequently when you use um, her pigments, if you do choose to use this product. Um, and obviously clean it because you will get pigment stuck and it will stick and it will suck, but I mean, you can always clean it off, but why not be prepared for next time now? That's that. So, little pizza cutters here. Um, I will suggest not doing this to yourself because I have one here and on my leg. Um, I mean, I guess you could, it really, really doesn't matter, but FYI, it'll stay longer than any practice strokes I've done on my hand, that's for sure. Um, okay, so, site is launching tonight. Um, I don't have a specific time. Um, I've given you a little peek at our products here. There's a couple more on there that I'm not showing right now. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, whatever, let me know. Um, I'll just be crying in my room tonight. So, um, like I said, if you guys need anything, holler. And I hope everyone has a warm weekend. Um, I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.